This video examines the Kunsax, an important object for understanding Olmec art and iconography. The Kunsax is a surprisingly large green stone object that may be divided into two major sections. We see the head section above and a much less detailed body section below. We're going to be focusing on the head section both in terms of carving style and in terms of iconography. And in fact, the carving exhibits the three major Olmec carving techniques. We have drilling here, where, where you, you get a drill that probably with sand abrasion uh, is allowed to penetrate into the, the stone, the green stone itself. Uh, we have just carving three-dimensional forms like this upper lip or this pug nose. And we have incising in terms of the incisions that form, for example, the fingers on the hand. We also have inci very faint incisions that seem to be uh, creating symbols on the face of this being. In terms of iconography, there are several diagnostic characteristics he seen here that may be seen in most Olmec iconography in some form or another. One is the almond eye of this particular being and related beings. The other is the pug nose that we see here. But perhaps most importantly, uh, we see the upturned upper lip, and this may be difficult to see at first glance, but once your eye is attuned to it, it shows up in a great many uh, images of the Olmec supernatural, this Olmec supernatural. We see the bottom part of the mouth here, but the upper lip is both exaggerated and greatly upturned. The combination of these things, specifically the almond eye and the raised or upturned upper lip, uh, may be diagnostic of this particular supernatural. Now, one thing that is interesting to note in terms of the larger Olmec corpus is how different this supernatural is from what we believe to be the portraits of the rulers that are embodied in these monumental or colossal heads. Look at the difference between this exaggerated upturned upper lip and the much more naturalistic lips of this figure. Also, you'll note that there are not the almond eyes that are upturned in the same way. Uh, there is a pug nose, but in fact, this uh, very well could be a combination of naturalism uh, and the limits or the parameters of the basalt boulder from which this was carved. Note also that in the colossal heads, we have an emphasis on headgear. Uh, each of these colossal heads has a very particular pattern in the headgear, something that we think identifies each ruler, whereas... Uh, there is either a cleft or nothing in the images of the Olmec supernatural. And from this, we believe that we can argue fairly, fairly convincingly that the Olmec colossal heads, of course, these are six feet tall and many, many tons, so they're very different in scale, and they would have been uh, seen and experienced in very different ways by the audience, but they seem to be associated with humans and almost certainly with rulers. They're, they're ruler portraits is what they are. And while the deities often portrayed in very precious materials like this green stone, and this particular Olmec deity, which seems to be uh, really ubiquitous in the Olmec corpus, uh, is, of course, non-human, is supernatural.